Hi, I'm Reese. Hello. Hello. I'm Ash. <laughs> Um, this is our big blue. Um, it actually used to be red, but we hand painted it and hand rolled it during the conversion. So now it's a lovely shade of sea coloured blue. It's a 2002 Mercedes Sprinter. Uh, we converted it all ourselves. We stripped it back to bare metal. Um, it cost around £3,000 to convert. The van cost just over £2,000. And it took about six months to do the whole thing. Ooh. In between full time work. Mm. Take a look inside. Ooh, come on, in. First thing when you come inside is the kitchen. Uh, we start with the sink, which runs off a 12 volt water pump. Works under pressure and shuts off as soon as you put it on. It's a um, domestic sink and a domestic tap as well. Uh, moving across, we've got the waterless water tank boiler um, it's an eight litre per minute one we've got 105 litre water tank in the back and that again runs off the same system with the sink uh, you get hot water in about five seconds and it gets up to about 45 degrees we've got a set on the minute so you have a nice shower of that and you can also wash your dishes and moving around we've got the tiles so the tiles is really really good bit because we thought we could grout it and put real tiles in, but when you're driving around hitting bumps on the road, the grout's all going to get cracked and it could fall off. So we've got self-adhesive stick-on stuff, which works actually really well. We've just stuck onto the ply and you could just spray it and wipe it down and take it off. So same with the counter. So we've got 12 mil ply with the counter and we've got the same self-adhesive stick-on tile stuff. And it works really well you just spray it down it comes straight off and we got it mainly because of uh we were worried about weight at first because kitchen counters are so thick and they're quite heavy so we didn't want anything like that uh, moving across we've got our two burner hobs there both gas bottles for the water tank and the uh the burner is straight under the counter here and that works quite well we've got seven kilograms <laughs> of gas tanks each for one for this and one for that and they last about two to three months each which is pretty decent um, we've got all of our shelves at the top so we've, we put all of our accessories up there we've got all of our tea coffee flour our books we have an omelet oven and all of our herbs and spices as well everything we use in there trying to utilize all the space we can we've got our mugs we've even got something for crepes and pancakes and we've got the little chicken hen there for all of our eggs Moving down the bottom, we've got all of our food, everything we need, pretty packed up there in a minute. All of our drinks, snacks, everything you can think of is in there, all of our cookware stuff. Moving around, we've also got our fruit and veg, we hang on the side. In a minute we've got some coconuts in there, kiwi, Ooh. apples, peppers, onions, garlic, everything's in there. We've got our second kitchen counter which is actually really handy. So one of us can be cooking, one of us could be prepping, chuck it over to that side like a kitchen chefware, and then we'll have all the plates and that ready for serving here. Going underneath, we've got some extra storage. So we've got all of our underwear, put loads of games, and it's just become a big storage place, to be honest. We've got laptops, we've got our first aid kits, there's a projector in there, there's all sorts of stuff. We just rammed it in and we keep it all out of the way. And just below it, we've got our electricity cupboard. So under there we've got two 
big batteries, our laser batteries, deep cycle. Um, to be honest, they run really, really well. We've got a Victron MPPT smart meter over there for the solar panels. We've got 200 watts on the roof, and we've also got our split charge as well, uh, which runs off the engine when you're driving around in it. And we've not had no issues so far with electricity. Everything's ran off 12 volt, um, and we wanted it like that. We didn't want to put any uh, 230 volt in here. We wanted to keep it all simple and off grid as possible. And it's working well so far. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. And then this tiny room, we have our shower and toilet. Got a little sliding door here, um, which just makes it handy. We can't close it when we're using the toilet, but it's not the end of the world. But we can close it when we're using the shower, so it keeps everything nice and dry outside. Um, we've got a little handheld shower head here just to save on water. So if we just press the pump down, the water comes out and we don't kind of waste any or use any unnecessary water. Um, we've got two little lights up here as well, which are quite handy to have in the night or if, you're, if you are showering. It gets quite a bit darker now when you close the door. This is our bookshelf as well, which was all handmade by us. Um, obviously you can't travel without a good book. So we wanted to make sure that we've got plenty of storage space for those up here, as well as some little trinky bits as well. Um, and then just here, we've got two seats for, you know, general chilling, because we didn't really want to be in the bed all the time. Um, so we thought times that we want to work on our laptops and things like that, we can just sit down. Um, on our lovely foam seats, we're actually helped, made by Reese's grandma. Um, and we've got a little table here as well, a little pull-out table. So we thought the pull-out table would be easier because we didn't want to keep making a table to, to put it all up and take it all down and everything like that. So we thought this would just be a hell of a lot easier. Um, so we've got that there as well as our two little porthole windows. We like the idea of the porthole windows for, it's mainly for safety reasons to be honest as well because um, Obviously, you can't really break in and climb into porthole windows, so it's handy. Um, and then just under here, we've got this little cupboard. We've got our fridge, which is probably the best thing we bought for the van. I don't think we could do without it, to be honest. It's massive and needs organising. <laughs> But it's, yeah, it's really, really handy. Um, oh, squeeze that back in. Just next to it as well, we've got our heating system. So here's the little switch for it. Switch it on and the hot air blows out of this bottom hole here, which is lovely when you have cold feet. We've also got, on each side of our seats, little charging points. So we've got USB ones there. So over here as well, by one of the seats, we've got, we found these online, which we've actually found really, really handy for extra storage. Instead of having like bits and bobs kind of jumbled all over the place or in any boxes taking up more room, we've just stuck these bungees down and this is actually full of all our games, all our travel games. Um, so that's, that's quite fun. Just above here as well, we've got all our switches for all our lights um, and for the fridge and for the water as well. Um, there are strip lights that run underneath the bedroom cupboard here. So they're just under here, lights the whole thing. Um, as well as strip lights in the kitchen as well. Over here by the second seat, we've got um, two hooks that we've drilled in here. This is for all our coats, hats, scarves, everything like that, extra storage, um, which we've quite handily tied down with a bungee cord. Just because when we were sitting there, we found that we were kind of getting smothered by coats and hats and scarves. So we thought we'd tuck it away so we've got more space to sit down. Um, and then up here as well, one of probably the most important things you could have in your van, um, a carbon monoxide alarm. It's definitely a must. So just above the bed here, we've got the three cupboards that we've fitted in, um, all for uh, all of our clothes. Um, so these are, excuse the squeak and the messiness of my cupboard. Um, 
the fitted with gas struts, which is just kind of help the so they don't slam shut or fly open. But they do squeak. <laughs> I think it's just your one. It's just my one because it's opened so much. So we've we've actually managed to squeeze in quite a lot in here. Well, I have. <laughs> I may have too much for our trip, but it's fine. Um, and we've also put on all our little cupboards. We actually hand painted our own doorknobs which actually saved us loads and loads of money, really, because we wanted some funky doorknobs. We've done it on the kitchen cupboards as well, um, but we did find that they were quite expensive, so we just got some plain wooden wooden doorknobs and um, painted them ourselves. That was quite fun. And this, my favorite part of the van. It's our lovely bed. Um, we chose to have a, a fixed bed because we really couldn't be bothered to make a bed every day. Um, so yeah, so we've got our fixed bed here. It's kind of, I'd say it's a small double, maybe a tiny bit smaller than a small double. Um, we basically, we got the mattress from Ikea. It was a foam mattress and we actually had to cut it down um, at, the, at the length end to make it fit in. So it's a tiny bit smaller, but it's really, really comfortable, so it's fine. This is our garage, the garage of the van. Um, this is actually an amazing space because we've managed to store in loads in the back here. Simply by handily using these clear plastic boxes, we've got, so we've got one for electricals. This one is Reese's personal one. I've got my personal one. We've got one for shoes to like keep the smell out. Um, and just behind, we've got a massive, massive one full of food. We've got a toiletry one as well. Um, yeah, we've got a huge one full of food. Because you can never have too much food. Um, this is our water tank as well. It is 105 litres. Um, yeah, so we've got that safely and securely fitted in there. We've got all our outdoor stuff in here as well. So we've got a bucket full of our wetsuits, outdoor kind of play things. We've got a surfboard, guitar, longboard, penny board, bodyboard, picnic blanket, hammock and all our cameras, electrical equipment, as well as hiking bags and general outdoor bits and bobs like that. So this, this garage space is actually it's quite a blessing really because there's so much stuff we've been able to bring that we wouldn't have been able to just fit in the van. So yeah, we love it. <laughs> so we have been officially on the road living in the van traveling uh, for the first time for about three months now um, we are unfortunately though we're due to the current world crisis of corona we're currently stuck in Morocco um, it's not actually as bad as it sounds we're safely and securely in a campsite um, in Marrakesh until we wait out the worst of the storm and can safely travel back to the UK. Which is quite sad because we were planning on continuing our travels. We were gonna go uh, south of Spain and south of France on the way back, and maybe get back by about May. But now it's probably gonna be a little bit earlier. Can't go to Spain, can't go to France. So just waiting a minute. Yeah. We normally live off grid <laughs> in the van. We've been living off grid for the three months while camping and mm. Because obviously all the electricity is well, you know, we built it to be off grid and to save money as well. So we are on this campsite at the minute. Um, still quite lucky yeah, to be absolutely. here. It's a really nice place. Yeah. Um, but when we get back, we'll be living full time in the van as well. Yeah. Which it's is be our proper amazing. full time home. Yeah. So it's actually good that we're here because we're getting used to it. Yeah. You know, we're so just proper van living. We've yeah. always wanted to do it. We've got many more plans in the future, Ooh. so stay tuned and you'll see whoop all of that. Whoop whoop. Future plans. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Ow. Yo. <laughs> Thanks for coming to our crib. 